All right. It, oh, okay. Looks like we are live. And today we are talking to Thor, God of Thunder, also known as Thomas Carter Rochester. Ooh, what's sauce on it? I like it. Well, your name, your name just sounds so fancy. I feel like it's like one of those British nobility things. <laughs> You know, like, uh, I've been watching a lot of, uh, I just binge Bridgerton, so uh, mm. now it's like, oh, Rochester, that sounds like you're like a duke or something, and now I want to be fancy too, so I'm going to put my fancy hat on. So Ooh, you we're at the derby now. Uh, I'm a fancy hat, so, all right, and you play the role of Kyle, our friendly local cannabis cultivationist and connoisseur yes. in our upcoming film Zombies the movie. Yes. Uh, but first of all, would you tell us how you uh, started on your your quest, your grand adventure towards the role uh, towards the road of stardom and acting? I started acting, uh, I mean, the dark story is my whole life. I was making sure my family never knew anything that was going on inside my head or my emotions. But the more fun stuff, which is also just as funny, is improv comedy. Mm -hmm. um, I started that doing, uh, what year was that? 2013, give or take, a month or two. Um, in college, I decided to start winging all of my presentations in college, which was a thousand times better than planning every single sentence oh, wow. I was going to say. I would just write down bullet notes. I'd go up there and my entire, I was just like, I'm going to make you laugh because these are terrible. I hate doing presentations. And it started to work. And uh, a friend of mine was like, you need to do improv. And I was like, no. Then I made a game of, uh, what was it? it was, uh, the Price is Right. I designed it with another friend of mine for orientation and then they're like, you know, you have to lead this now, right? And I was like, that'll be fine. And afterwards, I was like, I love this feeling. I need the rush. Give me more. And so I joined improv. And that started a journey of throwing myself off stages for a laugh. Um, I'm great taking a – I can take a bump. I can take a beating. I've walked away completely bruised on, like, half my body before from a show. Um, I'll do anything for a laugh. Uh, ask my friends. And then <laughs> – it's a dangerous saying, and they they test me a lot. Uh, hmm. Well, we might have to use that in the film. <laughs> hey, I, I, I will run into a tree, and I will make that tree move. Hundred oh, percent. Hmm. Where can I write that in? We might have to do that. <laughs> just, just kidding. Just yell. Just be like tree. <laughs> and you got Whoa. it. Bam. <laughs> wow. I hope you guys got that in one take. Call right. An <laughs> Call an ambulance. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your character, Kyle, without giving away too much of the, the plot? He is the smartest man alive, but he doesn't want anyone to know it. So he stays really low key, or I guess high key. Mm -hmm. high and I like he stays that. very high key, low energy, and he likes to bring in mm -hmm. the money while he's at it. He may or may not rhyme. We haven't got that far yet. He probably will, just because. Why not? I'm, right. Um, he's he's he is, in my opinion, the most important character in the movie. Um, he's the scientist you didn't know existed. He Ooh. is the greatest smelling man on the face of the earth. He wears a lot of Hawaiians. He wears gems and and stones, and he doesn't know how to spell well. Like just the word "well," he doesn't know how to spell that one. There's a lot of L's at the end. He's like, well, I guess. I like that. I like I like that character development that you've been working with there. I can't wait to see that in action for, for sure. So um, <laughs> when I was writing the script, okay, so there were like some characters that like automatically was just popping into my head. Um, and there were some characters that I was specifically writing for some actors that I was specifically writing characters for, but I could not figure out Kyle for anything. And I'm thinking maybe we'll go like a, one of those scrawny, pimply teenage kids or, you know, something like that. But then when um, there was, uh, what was um, the quarantine, the quarantine yes. chronicles, and we submitted our short films for that. 
and I saw your, your short film, Toilet Paper Jesus, and I was like, you know what? <laughs> I think that might be it. I think, I think, I think it might, I think it might be him. Um, and it, it was such an interesting film, but I just could not, I think I watched it a couple of times actually, just because you were just so magnetic in that film. And it was just like, wow, it was hilarious. And then your, you I, won, right? You, you won the. Yes. Surprising everyone, including myself, not my mom. She knew I was going to win, but I didn't. <laughs> always know yeah. right but you wrote the soundtrack to it as well i i did i i wrote toilet paper jesus hyphen single um <laughs> i got a beat off of youtube that i actually have had for the last six or seven years just sitting on wow. various hard drives and i had a whole different other song written to it and it was really weird and but like it just i mean the story get lo got lost in the middle and then i had like a whole second thing and it was i mean ironically it was about smoking weed because i was like that's what rappers do right they write about smoking weed so i'm gonna do that terrible i was terrible at writing about smoking weed i'm great at making nerd jokes um and i'm great at being the angry white rapper but i'm not good at talking about oh yeah man i got high because then what did i do when i got high i ate some cheetos and i watched football that's not a rap. That's just <laughs> things that would probably happen. You're right. Um, um, but the, yeah. the, the, I mean, the sound was so, the song was so catchy. I'm not even going to lie. It was, Thank you. Yeah. It, it actually won um, best R and B song for tracks music awards in the month of June as well. Really? Yeah. Really. Um, also a surprise to me. I just submitted it because I was like, I mean, it's annoyingly catchy. Like it's annoyingly catchy. <laughs> it, it, the second I hear the opening, all I hear in my head is me singing off key, you know, toilet paper Jesus. And I'm like, oh God, I wish I could just hit that with auto tune, but I don't know how to auto tune. So that sucked. <laughs> oh yes. I will. Yeah. It was so catchy. I had it in my head for the longest time. But is, is that something else that you do is, or was that just like a one-off thing that you did or you don't normally make music or? Uh, no, I do. I, I've been writing raps for off and on for the last six or se what year are we in officially? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not, I'm not even yeah. sure what you're doing right now. So. I, I think we're coming up on seven years since I sat down and like wrote my first rap, like wrote my first rhyme that I didn't officially hate. Um, but I really just did it for myself. And I never, was, I was like, I'm just going to write these cause I enjoy them and I'm going to have some fun. Um, and every now and then I have one that's just really good and lyrically diverse and it does something that not others can do. Um, but I could never write hooks to save my life. And I still, to this day, cannot write a good hook except Toilet Paper Jesus, but that was three words. So I, <laughs> it came with the beat. Like they had the built in. I was like, I can just yell Toilet Paper Jesus. Um, but yeah, no, I have a couple other raps. Uh, on New Year's Eve, on the HWWS New Year's Eve ball drop, I forget what the official title was. Um, I actually performed live. I mean, I say live. I was sitting in this very chair in this very room. Um, and I have a song that I've been, I still, I haven't got the uh, exact mix down that I like. Cause I'm, like we were talking earlier, perfectionist, like I get very angry that it's not exact, but I, I can do the whole song straight through, but you know, live it's impressive. But when you listen back over and over, you'll pick out the slurs. Um, but I performed it and I love that song and I'm still trying to perfect its, its, its recorded version um but i can do it live it's so well, much fun <laughs> and it's aggressive and it's you, fast should you go ahead and do it right now or should, should we wait for another uh, do we want me to just go straight acapella <laughs> i'm just kidding unless you uh, want i feel like people might want to hear what toilet paper jesus sounded like but um i mean i can do toilet paper Jesus. Oh, do i remember the lyrics to toilet paper jesus <laughs> I don't know. We have to play it on on the page one or put the link up there uh, one day. I feel like people are gonna want to know what toilet paper Jesus sounds like. Yeah. Uh, Speaking really quick, while we're talking about music, don't we have like other musicians in the cast who are like other writers um, and I, stuff? 
want to say that um, Tilden Whitfield and his wife just put out a song, I believe. Um, I'm not sure about anyone else for sure. I know they do have a song out. Um, it's a, a duet, but we do have um, Nick Flagstar who is scoring the the movie and he's also writing the theme song to it as well. Um, and what he's come up with so far is uh, pretty catchy. Um, I've had it in my head for like the past couple of weeks and I'll be putting like a little, a sample of it um, up at some point just so everyone can kind of hear what it sounds like. But um, yeah, uh, I, don't, I can't think of anybody else. We should all just do a cast I think, soundtrack. I, I think we should because I kind of felt like we had something going the other day with the, you know, cheesy <laughs> faux cheesy. Oh yeah. Uh, I, <laughs> yeah. I don't know if she wrote that or came up with that off the top of her head, but she did. She she just like I guess whenever she did her video. So I was like, how did I not think of that? So I actually wrote that into the script for her character because I was like, that is an that amazing is. line. How can it not be said? Yeah, I I I loved it. I was like, okay, all right, uh, makes me look terrible at my job, but I like uh, it. No. no. But yeah, so that is definitely in there. Um, so, okay, here's a here's a two part question for you. What is your dream role, and what has been your favorite role so far? Dream role, superhero and a Sith Lord. Okay, so a superhero Sith Lord or a superhero and, and a Sith. Sith Lord. Okay, Speci like preferably a Marvel hero, but I'm not. I'm I'm not picky DC. Um, <laughs> I just I love superheroes, and I've been wanting to be a superhero every single day right. of my life. Um, I try to stay in in his superhero shape, but that is uh, tight on a budget. Um, and then the Sith, I mean, it's just there's just a darkness in every everybody, and you know, if you get the right Sith character, you can have a lot of fun. You know, it's all about like instilling fear. And I have found that when I just don't emote in my face, it scares people. So I'm like, okay, I'll just emote in the real world. And on the camera, I'll just stare deeply in your soul and rip it out and then put it back in, but slightly less than it was before. Yeah, that, that could be a little unnerving. I can, I can see that, definitely. Yes. It gets my family all the time. <laughs> <laughs> They're just like, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, I'm just tired. And like, you have the angry face. And I said, yes, I am tired. Of course I'm angry. I am tired. <laughs> what's wrong with yeah. you? We don't know what to do exactly. right now. Um, now, my favorite role. I like roles that really give me something aggressively to play with. Um, my first role was, ironically, a drug dealer. Um, natural. And... I also was like, can he wear Hawaiians? And like, sure. <laughs> so I'm, I'm keeping that theme. Um, and yeah, he was a totally different like vibe. He was insane. Uh, that was a lot of fun. But I'd probably have to say that my favorite role, it's, it's in the film that I, I mean, there's a lot of good roles, but I was a, a racist POS in a movie called Certainty. It was a Florida Tech film. I went to college at Florida Tech and we filmed it in 2017. It took us nine months to make, zero budget. Um, students, it was, it was basically a, just a, there's no film department there. It was a uh, Boo Milligan. He was the writer and the director. He's a basketball player. His family, he grew up in LA. His family's in the entertainment industry in different areas. Um, and he wrote it and he's like, yeah, man, I want you to like, I was, somebody sent me your info. So I'm like, yo, dude, yeah, let me read the script. And I loved the script right off the bat. It is, um, it's, it's a mind bender. And I loved that idea about it. It's kind of a good genre. And I played a, I got some of the most evil monologuing dialogue I've ever had. And I just ate every second of it up. Um, and I, they were like, Oh, do you want to do a rehearsal? And I was like, no. And they're like, what? And I was like, I, I don't, I don't want to do a rehearsal. I was like, cause on the first take, I'm going to get it because I have been practicing and I need to save my energy cause we're going to do more than one take. And they're like, okay. Yeah. And when we were done, they were like, I forgot to act. 
<laughs> someone else was like, I totally forgot my line because I was just like, is he actually going to hit anyone? Because yeah. that was my energy. Yeah. I like expelled hatred from my body. I was thinking about the Washington Redskins too. That's how I, that's how I do it, man. I always had a plan for if I ever had to play a racist. I was like, I'll just think of the Redskins because it's hate, right? <laughs> wow. <laughs> that's Dang. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. That is so funny. Go Cowboys. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the Redskins, huh? Yeah. The well, for we have, formerly known as Redskins. Formerly yeah. known. Oh, that's right, because they're changing it to... They're currently just the Washington football team, which I will be honest, I was rooting for them last weekend to beat Brady, but that didn't happen. So expected. Wow. <laughs> okay. Oh. So you have a podcast, two podcasts? Wow. A Definitely one podcast. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Talk to us about your pod your podcast that you when you're your alter ego. <laughs> so yeah, well, my the podcast itself um, is Lights, Thunder, Action. It, you know, we talk all things DC, Marvel, Star Wars, and the happenings in the entertainment industry. Uh, David J. Thompson is an actual educated journalist, and he works for thedirect.com, which is like blowing up on the internet right now. Um, I, there's big things because I get inside info from him, and I'm like, yo, you guys are about to take over the world. Um, but he's, he got a job there. And so he brings in the news side. He has very different takes on movies and the entertainment industry than I do. Um, but I bring my, I've been on sets and I, I know how certain things work. So like we have a really good, um, energy and we, we met back in college. And so we have a very good rapport and we have a segment called what the news and we cover whatever news we feel like covering that week. Right. Um, and currently we are. Well, actually, currently we are in between uh, story segments. We just wrapped up the trilogy of trilogies um, after The Mandalorian ended, which is the greatest show I've ever seen in my entire life, outside of MASH. MASH is the greatest, still wins. Um, we, we decided, oh, we're going to dive into the three movies that Wanda and Vision were in because it leads perfectly into WandaVision, which comes out tomorrow. Um, and so we're about to dive deep on like eight straight weeks of WandaVision reviews and anything else that pops up. Uh, we interview comic book creators. Uh, we got to interview Bill Sadler last year, um, right before Bill and Ted uh, 3 came out. And uh, if you know Bill and Ted, if you, <laughs> excellent. If you know Bill and Ted, dude, he played death, man. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So where, where can we watch, when and where can we watch the podcast? Every, every week. Uh, it's, right now our schedule is Mondays. Um, that's because our work schedule has weirdly lined up for right now. Okay. Uh, our day jobs are always in the way, aren't they? So we, it's usually, as long as both of us are off work, it'll be af early afternoon, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on um, Mondays. If we work, it might be later in the evening. Um, and you can find that at Lights Thunder Action Show on Facebook, uh, at Lights Thunder Action. Uh, you know what? Just go to linktree.com slash Lights Thunder Action, and you'll be able to find all of our links to every place. We live stream directly to our Facebook page and the HWWS Web TV channel on YouTube, whom we've partnered with. Um, they're an online network on Facebook and YouTube. Facebook, they have about 50-something thousand followers. On YouTube, they have 13,000 subscribers. And we are always trying to boost those numbers. And there's a great community to the, at the HWWS uh, Media Group and Web TV family. We have, I want to say, like 20-plus hours of shows a week wow. on the network. And a lot of them are like, you know, talk-style shows, podcastings of that nature. Um, but we are hoping to branch out and bring in original scripted media as well oh. coming up in the next year or so. So okay. trying to do big things, big, big, big brain, big company Yeah, for things. sure. Mm. So speaking of jobs, we were talking a little bit earlier, like most people don't understand that actors have to have bill paying jobs until yeah. they make it and making it isn't, a-list celebrity st status. It's just, 
I can pay my bills doing something that I love and not have to worry about a boss not letting me off for auditions and all that other kind of stuff. And you said, <laughs> I was going to ask you what your, what your favorite bill paying job has been, but uh, we agreed that most of them have <laughs> lit us up in the bathroom, making us cry and scream for death to release us from the agony that we are. <laughs> <laughs> release me from these mortal bonds <laughs> okay i'm glad i'm not the other one who felt like that working because yo the struggle is real and they just they don't get the the passion the fire because they got bills to pay they got a job to do and unfortunately a lot of times it doesn't align with our creativity yeah unfortunately, or anything like that um was there anything else that you would like people to know about Thomas Carter Rochester or anything you would like to share? Um, uh, what are you looking forward to as far as filming zombies? Uh, I'm looking forward to uh, improving and freaking you out in the middle of scenes. In yeah. all honesty, I was like, I hope she's okay with me improving. And then you come out and you say, I'm not a big, like, I don't do well with improv. And I was like, well, I'm going to have to tone back what I plan to do already. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm glad that I would have flipped out so hard probably because again, yes, yeah, perfectionist, but I may allow it. I may allow it. <laughs> what you come up with? I'm really excited to see your scenes with you and teens. I think that could be really fun because she loves improv mm -hmm. and uh, I think there I might be some magic love teens and she's written um reels and audition scenes for me for uh agents so and she's like i love writing for you because you you just don't care and i was like hey you get me man yeah, we, <laughs> we are the so the opposite um she's always like you need to do more improv you and i'm like no i need my script i must say every word perfectly See, I'm the same way, actually. When people write me lines, I do not like to deviate from those lines unless it's like I forget a word here, or I forget a word there, and I get it. You know, as long as the sentence is right. almost grammatically correct, because I'm not great with grammar. Uh, as long as it's good enough or close enough and the, 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 what is the word? The point is made and came across. I'm like, all right, I can miss a word up here, to, here or there. But if someone's like, oh, yeah, just do whatever you, these are your bullet points, I can do that as well. It's, it's how I do my entire podcast. It's just I write down notes that I want, specific key phrases, and then the rest of it I just, I, I fluff. I superfluously add words that are not necessary, but adding a comma here and comma there, or there, I almost, see, exactly. Something, sometimes words happen, sometimes nothing happens. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, I have one rebel here encouraging improv on set. Uh, I don't know if I should block this person from commenting anymore or, uh, but <laughs> uh, whoa, I, I'll, I may allow some, some leniency with the verbiage once we uh, get on set, just now that I've been warned <laughs> and I won't have a coronary when it happens. <laughs> Like, I don't think you'd have a coronary. I think you'd probably pee your pants because that's my improv style is I'm there for the laughs. I'm there for the funny. And that's cool. I mean, like I said, uh, we're there to have fun. And the, if, if that's what makes it funny and better for everyone, then I'm all for it. Um, but uh, yeah, so I think that's all the questions I had for you today. Thank you so much for being on my second live interview. I think this went a lot better than the first one. <laughs> Glad we got that out of the way. Um, um, I just wanna thank everyone for tuning in, who tuned in, watching replay. If you wanna help support local actors like Thomas and myself, pursue our dreams and not have to suffer through the, the drudgery of, of jobs. Day jobs. I know how I know. <laughs> so we can just pay our bills doing what we love an independent film we would love it if you could donate to our gofundme and the link is in the pinned post um if you can't donate that's totally understandable um if you could just like share our page and share our posts and help us 
get the buzz around so that we can get more likes and follows and just get the community involved. We would appreciate that as well. Um, and you don't have a podcast tonight. You said it was at a different time. Yes. So um, if you guys want to watch Thomas, go to his webpage and get all the info there. Yes, you can go to, to linktree.com slash Lights, Thunder, Action for the podcast stuff. And you can go to linktree.com slash T-C-R-O-C-H-E-S-T-E-R-A-C-T. T-C Rochester Act. Uh, I like to spell it out because people don't know how to spell my last name. I, you know, and I, I was thinking, and I was like, you know, if you just took the T-H-O, kicked out the rest, and then just had the oh. R from Rochester, it mm -hmm. would be four. I mean, that's just like... Exactly. You cut out the middle 17 letters of my name yeah. and you have Thor. And so when Thank people you. go, you're not Thor. And I'm like, I can I show you mathematics uh, via differential equations that I am Thor, kid. Uh, I like it. I think it's <laughs> perfect. I mean, and, I mean, besides the fact that you slightly resemble, well, Chris and version anyway see but, uh, and i uh, i don't see that at all i mean i sound like him for sure but i was doing the shtick well before he was he was still he was still all beepity boopity boppity in you know age of ultron and then ant-man came out and i blew the world on fire and i'm a hundred thousand percent sure kevin feige is just stalking me and not giving me a job well, damn it feige <laughs> credit for that anyway Yes. Uh, and, you know, one last thing I want to say uh, before we go is I forgot to mention this and David will shoot me in the face with a potato gun um, if I don't mention this we've actually been nominated for podcast of the year award for the independent creators award I think I got that right Wow. Um, yeah so on our Facebook page if you go to our pinned post actually I think it's like the second link in our link tree as well um, you'll be able to join the group and you can vote, but not just us have been nominated. A lot of people from the HWWS Meet Web TV family who have podcasts were also nominated. Um, and it's all based on vote. It's a straight up popular vote, no electoral college. It's just whoever has the most votes. I still don't understand the electoral college. I'm not even going to lie to you. I've been through lots of school and I've had people explain it to me. A lot, and I'm just like, I don't see how this math works. I don't. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna keep my hands out of the government. Um, so yeah, if you could go vote for us and our friends, we would all be very appreciative. And also because we were saying we don't want day jobs, we have a shop. Oh, I should have wore a shirt. Oh, I didn't plan. It's it was dirty. It was dirty. I didn't want to dirty it anymore. Uh, we have merchandise, and right now until January 31st. There's a code on our Instagram and our Facebook page. You'll get free shipping. And boy, does that help because shipping is expensive in post-COVID wow. world. Well, congratulations on your nomination. You. I will go and vote for you guys as uh, well. Thank you. Um, again, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. And hopefully we'll be able to do this again next week. Uh, let's see. And what is, is today? Today is Thursday. So happy Friday's Eve, everybody. Peace out. Oh, like she, did it. she said it. <laughs> <laughs>